Welcome back to the Tiger Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the new Reaction Super 7 Transformers figures. This is Wave 1. I truly believe this is going to be the largest collection of Super 7 Reaction Vintage Style figures that they've ever made. I think this is going to be the biggest thing that they've ever done. This is going to be the largest line they've ever done. I'm buying into it right away. I'm going to get every single one of them because I think it's really cool, really exciting, and I'm going to tell you what I think they would double as. Coming up. So I got these figures from SureThingToys.com. The first thing I want to say is I do not like the price. I think they're a bit expensive for what they are, but the fact that I got all six the whole way for $100 ship, no tax, it cost uh, $16.67 a figure versus if it would have bought them local or any other place, it would have been 20 bucks figure after tax. So that worked out for me okay, but I want to show you that I have several other of these reaction figures, these Super 7 figures. So on the right, you're going to see the Terminator. And I picked those up when Hastings was going out of business, clearance sell for like $1.50, $2 or whatever. And I thought it was really cool. It's cool to get three and three quarter inch everything. And they didn't make really a three and three quarter inch uh, line of the Terminator. They were a little bit bigger figures. And I think everything in three, three, three quarter inch is awesome. I think this line is actually targeting me specifically. I also have this uh, Karate Kid. So there's Ralph Macchio as the Daniel LaRusso. And if you look at these price tags, you can see it here, you can see it here. They were $10 originally. And $10 I felt was still a bit much. I felt like these were really $5 figures. But now they're commanding $15 to $18. And the reason is because of the franchises there. So that kind of bothers me in a way. So I also have some of these Back to the Future figures, which I think are really cool. I like these figures. They're three and three quarter inch, just like the uh, original Star Wars, which is kind of what I collect. And so it kind of fits into what I collect in a way when it comes to vintage. One thing I want to show you is, you see how it says Funko X Super 7? Funko is the company that gives you those, uh, those things that look like a disease growing on a shelf. Uh, what are those called? Pops. All of that fun out of the way, let's look at this Optimus Prime now. I'm not actually going to open these guys. I'm going to show you what they look like in the package. I'm going to keep mine in the package. And I know a lot of Star Wars collectors get really mad that I don't devalue my figures and open them or desecrate them or whatever you want to call it. But after 20 years of driving 6 to 12 hours to buy individual figures, and try to save tens of thousands of dollars over that time frame, I don't want to open this. So it's it's just where I'm at. All right, so here it is. This is what it looks like on the shelf. Looking nice and good. I'm making some adjustments to the old Star Wars shelf. So if you could see these guys, they look really good next to Star Wars figures because of the way they're set up. And they also look good with... Well, like six figures. Here's the back of it. It's going to show you all the figures that we're going to look at real quick. And I'm going to compare them to the legend size figures. I'm going to compare them to a few other things. But looking at this, uh, this is what's out now. We have 15 more on the way. And in my new segment, I'm actually going to show you some pictures of some more that are coming in the next wave. And so they only have five points of articulation. So the five points of articulation are the head moves, the shoulders move and they move at the waist no knee no elbow no wrist articulation and looking at this he does come with his gun signature gun Optimus Prime of course this one here is unpunched that's a big deal when you collect finished stuff but unpunched and so let's do a quick comparison to a Legends so I kind of feel like it would fit in all Legends shelf. I think that the uh, Optimus Prime for Magic Square is actually a pretty big figure. He's pretty large. So this guy would work if you were to say, hey, I don't want to spend 50 on Magic Square. 
I want to spend 20 or, you know, if you buy it like I did, 16 67 and just put them on your shelf. Now, my son did point out that these things don't transform, so I, I agree with him on that point. That is an issue. If you have a Legends collection, obviously you like the fact that the Legends figures do transform. This does not. So here he is compared to the Heroes of Cybertron figure and compared to the Dollar Tree one. Now this Dollar Tree figure here is almost the right size to match to the Heroes of Cybertron, but way smaller, way smaller than this guy. So this guy actually fits your Legends collection a lot better. These guys, nowhere in the realms of Legends collection, they're just way too small and not quite fitting the aesthetic, depending on what you think. Megatron looks good. He's a very G1-esque Megatron. Card art looks great. I think card art is the biggest part of this and why people would want it the most. Looking at the back here, same back, exactly the same. And let's do a quick comparison of him and the Agamemnon from New Age. And yes, New Age is a little bit bigger. If you're going to notice that all these figures, the head looks a bit bigger than the body, but the actual figure is a bit small. Like as you can see, he's elevated a little bit off the ground there, and this guy is not. So I still think he'd fit in on your legend shelf just fine, look pretty good. I mean, of course, if you're okay with it not transforming, and maybe if you don't want to spend 50 and you want to spend like 17 like I did on that guy, well, that'll work. And here he is next to the Heroes of Cybertron and the Dollar Tree one. And as of course, like you're going to see with every one of these examples, mostly, they are too small. The other options are too small. This guy fits just fine on a legend shelf and looks super tuned. Pretty awesome. Next up, we've got good old Bumblebee. And I'm going to do a couple things different with this guy, which obviously you can see his card art looking pretty good. Some glare right there, but... It's a nice looking card art. It looks, these cards look beautiful. They just look great. Let me compare Bumblebee to the Magic Square Optimus Prime. And I'm one that feels okay with Minibots being a little bit bigger. I just think Minibots are way undersized for what they are. Let's pull out the, well, this would be a new age. And I just feel like it's too small. And then, of course, if you pull out a Masterpiece, he's even bigger than the Prime, so that doesn't work, but there it is. So the only other one we can compare it to is the one they were selling at the Dollar Tree, so $1, uh, 20 bucks basically. $1, 20 bucks. And what are you going to get that's different? Well, this doesn't really have any articulation. This does have five points of articulation, so there you go. Soundwave, again, a very very G1 look to it. Let's let's look at this guy. He looks great. Comes with his battery gun bomb accessories. Hey, there's a symbol of that one place. Uh, he looks good. Of course, the back looks exactly the same as the rest of them. And the other thing I want to show is there are two different versions floating around of Soundwave and the Legends. If you want to go the DX9 route, or if you want to go McFans Toys route, Hot Soldiers route, either way you look at it. I think that when you really look at this, this figure is DX9 sized. Wow, let's get that just right. He's sized more like DX9, and McFans Toys is a bit bigger. I think whatever your collection is, he would look great on a legend shelf. And again, he's way bigger than the Dollar Tree version. If you're into that kind of thing, I think the Dollar Tree ones are cool. Those little clips, my kids have them on their backpacks and it just brings some joy to me watching them. That's why I even talk about the clips. So next on this list is Starscream. And so let's have a look at this guy now. This one came unpunched. So some of them had the punch in it still. Some of them did not. I wish they all had the punch in it. That's just the way I roll. Starscream comes with this little Megatron gun with him, which I probably will never use. And he looks good. I mean, the paint, beautiful. Five point of articulation. But let's do some quick comparisons. Here I have the McFans Toys version of Legends. So 
he would work as your Legends figure. I think that the McFans Toys is a bit on the big side for Starscream because when you look at Starscream next to, say, the only, well, best version of Megatron, he's a bit too big for that Megatron, but I live with it because, I mean, Legends scale doesn't really work. So, pull this guy out. Let's put Megatron right here next to him. So if you had him in your Legends and you didn't make a big mess like I just did, how would all that look? And it would look fine. That would look really good in your collection if that's the route you wanted to go. Quick side-by-side -side of Heroes of Cybertron. Why do I keep showing these Heroes of Cybertron figures? Because they are, in my mind, the most similar to this. They actually have more articulation. I think the for whatever reason, the little forearms come off or something. I, I don't know exactly what's up with that, but there's a bit more articulation. The heads, I don't even think move, but they have knee movement. This, the, the articulation on these is crazy, but if you can see the two, you can see that this is vastly superior, but I think those were four bucks back in the day. So lastly, I wanna talk about Jazz. And the thing about Jazz is he looks super G1. He looks really good but a bit exaggerated, I guess you could say. If you look at him, you would say, maybe he'd work in your Legends collection. So put him next to Prime, and he is kind of big, but not too big. I think it would work perfect, because Prime's bottom of his feet would put him about here, so Prime would still tower over him a bit, if it, the magic square. But the only other option is the New Age, and the New Age is just too small. So, I mean, if you're gonna spend 33 or $35 on him, the 20 on him next to Prime, I, I don't know. I think this is a better option than even the New Age one. So I hope you enjoyed this video, had a look at these things, whether you like them or not, whether you're getting them or not, it's still something interesting that's going on in the Transformers world, something that is out there. Maybe you're gonna pass on it, maybe you're gonna pick it up, maybe you find that I gave you the best deal, Put it in the comments, like, subscribe, tell me everything you think about this line. Are you going to go forward with all the Devastator and the other things that are coming up? I, I don't want to ruin my news because i got some pictures coming. So like, subscribe, don't hang around.